This is my ant weight combat robot Moray, and I'm just gonna do a quick design update. <laughs> So I made a video already on an earlier version of Moray. If you haven't seen that, then you can go ahead and watch that one. And I talked about how I was going to bring the weight down to get it within that one pound weight limit. And I have successfully gotten Moray within the weight limit. Okay, this is me in editing, and I just wanted to say that some of the footage might look a little bit weird. And that's because the footage was a little bit shaky, so I had to fix that while editing. So hopefully it shouldn't be too bad, but yeah, that's why it might look kind of weird. So I'm just going to go over all the different things I did to bring the weight down. The exact thing that you see right here is 0.3 ounces underweight, but the battery is not in it right now, and the battery weighs 0.9 ounces. So this exact version of Moray with the big disc is going to be overweight, so I won't be able to run this. That's a shame because I did test it with the disc on it, and the disc is the best weapon I've designed yet. It's extremely powerful, and when it spins up to full speed, if I spin around in a circle, it's powerful enough to gyro flip the whole robot over. I'll put out a separate video of the testing that I did. But I also designed another weapon in case this was too heavy and to have different configurations, and that is this small disc right here. So both of these are cut out of grade 5 titanium, which I got from Send Cut Send. And these ones are much lighter than the disc. It's actually less than an ounce. And I did test it out, and it's very damaging, which I was pleased to see. So I'll put this on and show you what it looks like. Alright, here's the small blade on Moray. And I didn't really want to have to use this because I was looking to have a larger spinner on the robot but I'm gonna have to go with this for weight purposes, but it is actually effective in testing, so that's nice. One of the other changes I made to bring the weight down was changing the shape of the chassis, like I said in the last video. So here's the old Moray chassis, which I hit with the new Moray, so that's why it's very beaten up and there's a lot of scratches and chunks taken out. So you can see that the old one was a complete box in terms of the shape, and the new one has these angled corners so that reduces a lot of the weight because all this material that was right here is just gone on the new version. That also means that I had to create a smaller top plate to fit the new version so that also cut down some of the weight. And then the only other significant change I made to bring the weight down was changing the upright. So on the old Moray I had this much larger upright that I would run which would run the much larger bar. But on the new version of Moray, I'm running a smaller blade, and even the disc, which is slightly bigger than the blade, is nowhere near as long as the bar. So here, I'll get the old weapon out. You can see that the disc, the diameter is not the same as that bar. So I'm able to run a shorter upright to accommodate the new weapons. Also, the way I attach it to the robot is different. So on the old one, I would use this bit that was bent off to the side and screw it into the bottom of the robot. But on the new one, I screw it straight into the side right there. So that gets rid of all of this material down here. So here's what the old upright used to look like, and here's the new one. So you can see there's a very big difference in the size. And the old one was steel. The new one's aluminum, so it's even lighter. The old upright had issues bending while hitting things during testing, and I've tested out this new Moray with both, both the disc and this blade a few different times, and so far there's been no real noticeable bending of the upright, even though it is aluminum instead of steel. The weapon is at a bit of an angle, but that's not because the upright bent. It's just at an angle for some reason, but it shouldn't really affect the performance of the robot. Oh, and yeah, one more thing I did to bring the weight down was having the top plate be printed with TPU instead of the old polycarbonate top plate that I had. And I did paint this nice moray eel design on the top. I think it turned out really nice. I just used some acrylic paints, but that really helps it look cool. And the little indicator light right there is the eye, so when the robot's on, the eye will light up blue. And even with all this stuff I did to bring the weight down, 
the final version that I'm going to compete with is exactly 16 ounces, which is equal to one pound. So it's right at the weight limit. I'm not sure if they count this when they weigh your robot, but the little switch thing is actually 0.2 ounces, so it is slightly under. And I'm definitely a bit disappointed that I didn't have a little bit more weight to work with because I did 3D print some anti-horizontal spinner wedges to go on the front, as well as these nice blue hinged forks. So I would have loved to have run some different configurations, but I just don't have weight for it. So that that's a shame, but at least I got the robot within weight. Oh, and one more design choice that I forgot to talk about. The blade is pretty small, so it doesn't quite extend past the upright up here. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem because I'll just have to hit a robot with that side of my robot. So I'll just have to drive a bit strategically. Though the other uprights that I have, I did cut down a little bit, so that should help. But uh, yeah, it's not ideal, but for the next version of the robot, that should be fixed. And for the next version, I should definitely be able to find weight for the big disc, which I really do want to use. Alright, so that's it. This is the new version of Moray, and I'll be competing with this version at Rabid in Richmond pretty soon, and I'll do an event recap when that happens and go over how I did.